Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Farrant. Can I confirm your name, please? Stephen Jackson. Thank you for letting me examine your abdomen today. I'm just going to have a look at you from the end of the bed. Can you take a nice deep breath in for me, please? And out. Can I have a look at your hands, please? And turn them over. And turn them back over for me. Relax that hand for a second. And can you put your arms straight out in front of you and cock your wrists back, please? Hold them there. Okay, relax your left arm for me. Just relax this one for a second, let me take the weight of it. Okay, just relax down for me. Can you just pull down on your eyelid for me, please? That's great. And open your mouth for me. Let me have a look. Lift the tongue up for me. That's great. Could you sit forward for me, please, now? I'm just going to have a look at your back. Okay. Could you lift your chin up for me, please? Just going to have a feel of your neck. Okay. I'm just going to lie you back down now, all right? Okay. I'm now going to just have a general look at you. Do you have any pain in your chest? No. Do you have any pain in your abdomen? No. I'm now going to press a little bit deeper. I'd like you to take some nice deep breaths in and out when I tell you. Deep breath in and out. 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 Okay. Deep breath in and out. 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 Okay. Just roll to your right slightly for me, please. And back. And roll slightly to your left. That's great. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to have a little bit of a tap. Could you roll towards me onto your right side, please? Deep breath in for me, if you just say like that. And out. And in again. And out. And in again. And out. And in again. One and out. Remaining. Okay, just say like that. Okay, lie on your back again for me, please.
I'm just going to examine your legs. Thank you very much. So to complete my examination, I'd like to perform a full set of clinical observations. I would like to uh, examine the external hernial orifices and palpate for inguinal lymph nodes. I'd like to perform a urinalysis examination. I would like to examine the external genitalia and perform a digital rectal examination. Thank you. Please can you present your findings? This lady has autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. The clinical signs are bilateral blottable masses in the flanks, which I am able to get above. She has no evidence of renal failure, she's uvolemic, and she has no evidence of current or previous renal replacement therapy. How might patients with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease present? They may present with hypertension, they may present with the signs and symptoms of renal failure, or it may be detected uh, on blood tests. They may present with proteinuria or hematuria, or they may also present, or present with symptoms associated with the extrarenal manifestations of polycystic kidney disease, such as cysts in the liver or pancreas. Can you tell me any more about the inheritance of PKD? It's an autosomally dominant condition. There are two main uh, genetic mutations that are associated. Around 80% of patients have a mutation on chromosome 16, with the rest mostly having a mutation on chromosome 4. There are also a small amount of patients who have no detectable genetic abnormality. Do you know of any differences between uh, each inherited type? The latter type... Uh, polycystic kidney disease type 2, which is associated with a mutation on chromosome 4, tends to be less severe, with later onset, less cysts, and a later progression to renal failure. How would you treat someone with PKD? The management is multimodal, with good control of blood pressure, ideally with ACE inhibitors, very important. There should also be aggressive control of hyperlipidemia and patients should be on a high fluid low salt diet. In the early stages of the disease vasopressin receptor antagonists may be of use whilst later on in the disease as the renal failure progresses the patients may require renal replacement therapy and or transplant. What are the extra renal manifestations of the disease? As mentioned these patients often present with hypertension. They may also present with cysts or symptoms of cysts in other organs, for example the liver, the pancreas or the seminal vesicles. Probably the most significant extra renal manifestation is the risk of cerebral aneurysms which may present with intracerebral haemorrhage or subarachnoid haemorrhage. Patients may also present with colonic diverticulae. Do you know of the indications for a nephrectomy of a polycystic kidney? Ideally, in these patients, uh, nephrectomy should be avoided. However, at times it may be required. One indication is to make room for a transplanted kidney if a donor becomes available and the patient's on the transplant list. Other indications would be progression to renal cell carcinoma, chronic pain, chronic infection, or large and significant hematuria. Would you always need to perform a nephrectomy prior to transplantation? You do not always need to perform a nephrectomy. And ideally, the new kidney will be transplanted in with both of the old kidneys left in place. However, on occasion, it may be necessary simply to make room for the new kidney. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Adult polycystic kidney disease is a common condition seen in Station 1 of PACES. If the patient is not an end-stage renal failure, then there may be very little in the way of clinical signs, other than the presence of enlarged kidneys. If this is the case, then don't go through all the negative signs. Stick to the positive findings and only important negatives. Make sure the examiner can be confident that you have correctly identified that the mass you have felt is a kidney and not liver or spleen, i.e. could you get above the mass, did it move with inspiration, was it blottable? 
Other important points to mention in a case of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease would be the absence of hepatosplenomegaly, as both liver and spleen can be cystic and therefore palpable. It would also be relevant to comment on presence or absence of any features suggestive of clinically detectable renal impairment, i.e. the patient's fluid status, any evidence of previous or current renal replacement therapy. It is worth taking note when examining the patient's eyes whether there is any sign of a third cranial nerve palsy, which may reflect an intracranial aneurysm. The prevalence of aneurysms is approximately 5% in young adults and increases with age. In individuals over the age of 60 with polycystic kidney disease, the prevalence of intracranial aneurysms can be 20% or more. Rupture is associated with uncontrolled hypertension. Other questions that could have been asked in this case could have been discussion of end-stage renal failure in ADPKD, including when to consider workup for renal transplantation and dialysis, and also about modes of dialysis itself.